Uh, well, when I read the book, uh, it was really the dialogue that, that, that excited me. It was a new, it, it's Don DeLillo ha writes amazing dialogue. It's very specific. It's very, has, has a style, a stylization that's unique to him. And it's sort of like Harold Pinter dialogue or David Mamet dialogue. You can always hear it. Uh, the thing is that, that Mamet and Pinter write plays, and so you hear it. And, and DeLillo writes novels, and he's never had a book that's been made into a movie before. So reading the book, I was starting to hear the dialogue, and I'm saying, I really would love to hear this dialogue book. And it's, it's unique, it's terrific, it's funny, it's, it's bizarre, um, it's trenchant, it's cutting. And, uh, and that was really what, what the hook was for me, uh, to, to make this book into a movie. Yeah. Um, mine was even simpler. I, I kind of read a lot of scripts, and it's frustrating to see this, almost the exact same script being made, uh, movies being made, like, every year. And so when something comes which is genuinely different, um, it stands out almost to the point of ridiculousness, and uh, and I guess that's the kind of what I want my career to be. Great. So maybe you can tell us what it was like to work with David. Um, Should I leave the room? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, great. I mean, there's like because uh, I've always I've never really worked on something where where a director has ultimate control, basically. It looked like very few people were actually questioning decisions, whereas normally mm -hmm. my experience on virtually every film that I've ever had is just an unending series of people, everyone questioning the director, like everybody questioning everything mm -hmm. about everything. Mm -hmm. And with this, there was a very much uh, a confident atmosphere on set, which uh, I thought was great. It's a totally different experience. You don't feel like, you know, a lot of the time you feel, as an actor, like, I've got to take more control of this movie, and you can't. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't at all. And it, it ruins both side, both people's jobs if you're trying to, you're trying to do someone else's job. Um, and on this, it was really one of the first times where I just f could really lose myself. Um, so it was nice. Um, David, maybe you can describe your first meeting with Rob and kind of how you knew that he was the guy to play Eric Packer. Well, we met really on the phone, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was really a couple, it was phone calls over a period of maybe a week or ten days, I think. Uh, really, I could tell that he knew it was good and, and, that, and that he wanted to do it, but that he was afraid of it. Afraid in the way that actors often are afraid, really, which is they don't want to be the one to screw it up because they're not good enough or, or they don't, they'll be on the set and they'll realize they don't really understand it and they can't deliver what, what they want. And, uh, and the few acting gigs that I've done myself, I've had exactly that same thing. I was like, are you sure you want me to play this? Because mm -hmm. there are other actors who are much better, you know. And in my case, that's very true. But in Rob's case, no, he was, the, he was absolutely the, you know, I, I had no doubt that he was the right guy. Um, and in talking to him, I was even more convinced. And it really, really just a question of, um, of you know, us understanding that, you know, we knew what we were both getting into. So a uh, little bit on just how you prepared for the role. Um, I, can't, I mean, it, it was strange because I read, the first time I read it, I read it out loud, the script, when I was by myself and I was in uh, Louisiana. Like, it, we had the, it's weird to read a script and you have the desire to actually immediately want, want, to, want to speak it. Um, and I had it, this kind of instinctive idea of how to do it before I'd even finished the script. And then I spent the next, like I went up to Toronto for like three weeks and spent the entire time I was there systematically destroying all my <laughs> instinctive <laughs> ideas. And then once we started shooting, going back to them anyway. Um, but yeah, almost every bit of preparation. The only bit of, the only thing which really helped was just stuff, accent stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked, I worked on that a lot. Great. And then, uh, for David, what, what do you hope audiences take away from this movie? Like, what's the, what do you hope they're talking about when they walk out of the theater? I have no idea. Really. <laughs> I mean, it, it's because it's interesting. I mean, it's not like you're creating a movie so that people will 
uh, think differently about capitalism or, or even think differently about you as a filmmaker or anything. You're creating this sort of organic kind of life thing that you hope is alive and, uh, and, and does have a life of its own. I mean, honestly, and it's such a cliche, cliche but it is like, like having children. I mean, you, 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 you ultimately, they, they become their own creature, and you don't have anything to do with them other than watching them from a distance, you know? And in a way, the movie's like that. So yeah. I, I, it's not as though there's a message, you know? Great. We'll let you guys get to lunch. Thanks okay. a lot, Herb. Thank you. Thank you.